professor R Ashokamani former professor and head of the department of physics at Anna University Chennai and presently guiding five research scholars he has more than 40 years of ug and pg teaching experience and 25 years of research experience 14 research scholars have obtained doctorate under his guidance in the area of solid state physics He has more than 150 research publications to his credit of which 90 are in international journals. He has authored a book on solid state physics which has an international publication. He has participated in several international conferences both in India and abroad. He is a fellow and treasurer of Tamil Nadu Academy of Sciences. Welcome to the UGC lecture series in applied electronics. and this will be the last lecture on bondings in solids which forms one of the papers in the physics of materials and uh, in this last lecture lecture number 15 the contents of uh, the lecture are as follows rotating crystal method powder diffraction debeshearer camera and neutron diffraction a comparison with the x-ray diffraction and we saw the rotating crystal method in the last lecture in the rotating crystal method you have a crystal at the center and this crystal will be you see the crystal here at the center which rotates right which uh, so The, the, that is the reason why it is called the rotating crystal method. Now, in the X-ray diffraction methods, as I told you in the last lecture, there are the three different methods which we have been discussing. One due to Lovi, then the rotating crystal method, and the powder method. In the Lovi method, as I told you some time back, a single crystal is used, and this method can be used to study. only the orientation of the crystal and not the crystal structure the crystal structure cannot be determined using the simple lovi pattern or the using a simple lovi picture or the lovi spots that you get on the other hand in the rotating crystal method the lattice constants can be determined again here use a single crystal but you have you have a monochromatic beam instead of a polychromatic beam you got a monochromatic beam in the case of a rotating crystal method now we will pass on to the powder diffraction method it means that you got a polycrystalline solid you don't have single crystal you got a polycrystal powder system and uh, you make use of a monochromatic beam it is not necessary that you have to use um, uh, a white light a monochromatic beam because the uh, different uh, crystals are there different planes are there lattice parameters can be obtained in the accurate method the variable angle and uh, in the powder method if a powdered crystal is used instead of a um, single crystal then there is no need to rotate it so again let me repeat if a powdered crystal is used there is no need to rotate it because uh, already the crystals are having different orientation so the crystal need not be rotated okay small crystallites are there having different orientations you got x ray beam like this then you will have one crystal like this another crystal like this and so different the small crystallites will have different orientation with respect to the incident x ray beam here a monochromatic x ray beam is incident on a powdered sample or a polycrystalline sample this is useful for samples that are difficult to obtain in a single crystal form so a polycrystals which are difficult to obtain in a single crystal this is a method that can be used the powder method is used to determine the lattice parameters accurately lattice parameters are the magnitudes of the unit cell what do you mean by lattice parameter you If you take a cube, you got only one lattice parameter A, right? Because cube means all the sides will be having equal dimension. On the other hand, you make use of you think of a 
orthorhombic structure. What is orthorhombic structure means A not equal B not equal C. The cell dimensions in the three mutually perpendicular directions A, B, C all of them will be different that is the orthorhombic structure. Okay. So, the, or the lattice parameters of the orthorhombic structure the magnitudes of A, B and C or the tetragonal structure wherein you will have A equal to B not equal to C and a cubic structure A, B, C all of them will be identical. So, these are the lattice parameters and the lattice parameters can be obtained using the powder method. For every set of crystal planes or that is one or more crystals that means, every crystal planes means dealing with uh, one or more crystals will be in the correct orientation. So, that the Bragg's law is satisfied what is Bragg's law n lambda is equal to 2 d sin theta. So, the theta will be you will have a plane like this you will have a plane like this another plane another plane all are parallel to each other for all the parallel planes there will be the angle of incidence will be same the angle of incidence the grazing incidence will be like this for this also the grazing incidence will be same. Okay. Therefore, for a set of parallel planes for a given theta and for a given lambda you will be having a diffracted beam. So, the Bragg's equation will be satisfied for different crystalline planes having the same orientation with respect to incident beam then you will be getting a diffracted pattern each diffraction line is made up of a large number of spots each from separate crystal each spot is so small as to give the appearance of a continuous line. You see here in a if a monochromatic x ray beam this is a monochromatic x ray beam it is directed towards a single crystal this is a single crystal right. Okay. You have a single crystal you get the beam now you have the x ray beam incident on the single crystal then the diffracted beam depending upon the orientation right depending upon the crystalline plane if the plane is like this then through the single crystal it will be getting diffracted then that is diffracted along this direction along this direction. So, the diffracted beams will be going in different directions depending upon the orientation of the plane with respect to the incident beam. So, for the powder sample again this is the same thing I am having here the powder sample for a sample of several randomly oriented crystals the diffracted beams will lie on the surface of several cone you have got a cone here right you have got, you have got a uh, you know this is a incident beam the dotted line now I am showing is the incident x ray beam that is incident on a, a crystal and what happens now you see here uh, the diffracted beam it goes like this right there is a beam another beam goes in this direction another beam will go in this direction. So, the beam that is going in this direction and this direction will give rise to a cone right you have a cone okay. then you have got another cone here. Similarly, for back reflections you will be having cones here right because you have got a beam coming in this direction a beam coming in this direction the front reflections are shown here. So, this is a back reflection and the front reflections will be coming in this direction and the entire thing in the powder method we will be using a what you call a Debye camera which I will be showing later in the Debye camera through the hole the x-ray beam will be going and it will be falling on the crystal and you will be having a cylindrical film right half of the film will be covering the reflections coming in the in this direction or the front reflections whereas, the, the other half of the film will contain the reflections or the diffracted beams coming in the backward direction the back reflections. So, there will be several cones will be formed as I will show you in a moment. So, for a sample of hundreds of crystals powder sample the diffracted beams form continuous cones you have got a cone here a cone here this is what I showed told you just now this is the x ray beam that is coming here right the x ray beam is going okay, in this direction this is a hole here it is incident on the crystal and uh, this is a film here a cylindrical film that is kept inside the camera and uh, the front 
uh, you know the, the diffracted thing the beams will give rise to a cone here a cone here and so this cone will cut and the this cone will uh, will give rise to a ring here and this cone will give rise to a ring here right and similarly this will give rise to a ring and this will also give rise to you see a ring a, a ring will be obtained here so for a sample of hundreds of crystals the diffracted beams form continuous cones a circle of film is used to record the diffracted pattern as is shown here and it will be shown in the figures to come each cone intersects the film giving the diffraction lines the lines are seen as arcs because you have got a cone but you have got a film like this right the cone will be here so the diffraction pattern will be seen in the x ray film as arcs so you have the arcs right you see the arc here so this is the hole through which the beam is incident it is going through that okay now you have a cone here that is incident on the diffracted beam incident on the film will give rise to a cone will give rise to arc here you have got arc here another arc here another arc here these are the diffractions coming in the front direction in the backward direction the diffracted things are coming as cones here cone here uh, you know you have got arc here arc here okay there are arcs a small amount of powdered material is sealed into a fine capillary tube which is called a lindemann tube a fine capillary tube is kept here you see a tube here a fine in the device shader camera this is called a device shader camera in which what do you have you have a small cylindrical tube in which the powdered sample is kept the x ray beam will be incident and it will be incident on the crystal and the front diffracted beams will be coming in this direction and the backward reflected beams will be coming in this direction giving rise to finally the cones will intersect with the x ray film giving rise to arcs right you have the arcs okay the sample is placed in the device shader camera and is accurately aligned to be at the center of the camera x rays enter through the camera through a collimator you got a the x ray beam that is entering okay it is leaving here the, the, this hole is shown here and this hole, hole is shown here and finally in the x ray film you will be having arcs as i be showing just now so the powder diffracts the x rays in accordance with the bragg's law to produce cones of diffracted beams these cones intersect a strip of photographic film located in the cylindrical camera the camera will be a cylinder right the camera will be a cylindrical camera will be there to produce um, the characteristic set of arcs on the film finally what you find is you get a arcs right the, the film will be a cylindrical film inside the a cylindrical camera a, a cylindrical metallic camera will be there and uh, the sample will be kept at center and the film will be kept in this form right the cylindrical film is kept okay then this is what you get and uh, the film when it is removed it will look like this determine what determine the crystal structure what do you mean by crystal structure by crystal structure we mean the cell dimension of the unit cell what is a unit cell if you look at this building the building is made up of uh, you have got walls right each wall consists of um, number of uh, bricks and brick is the fundamental building block it is the unit cell for this wall right the brick is the unit cell for the wall the walls are made up of bricks so similarly all solids that you have got whether it is iron or steel or you know any alloy or compound in acl whatever be anything whatever solid you are talking about now they have they are made up of fundamental building blocks which contain atoms or molecules the fundamental building block is called the unit cell the unit cell characteristics such as the lattice parameters the angle that separates the various um, you know the unit cell dimensions abc 
you know in the hexagonal thing it will be different when a cubic it will be the angles will be different and so on. So, you will be having the lattice parameters and the angles these are the unit cell characteristics not only the unit cell characteristics, but also the the bonding nature I told you about covalent bonding and other ionic bonding and so on the bonding how the electrons are distributed that also will be coming from x ray diffraction. Okay. Now, therefore, x ray diffraction is a powerful tool to study them the way in which the atoms are arranged in a solid in any solid it may be a covalently bonded solid like silicon or germanium or you can take a any metallic material or an ionic solid like a MgCl2 and so on. So, irrespective of the nature of the bonding the way in which the atoms are arranged can be studied by x-ray diffraction not only the arrangement of atoms, but also the nature of the bonding or in other words what I mean is how the electrons are distributed can also be studied using x-ray diffraction. These are the arcs that will be get getting in the Debye Scherer camera as I told you just now. So, this picture shows XRD diffractometer XRD refers to x-ray diffraction right XRD diffractometer this is what is uh, being used nowadays uh, you know ok. Then the applications of x-ray diffraction XRD is a non destructive technique some uses of uh, x-ray diffraction are distinguishing between crystalline and amorphous solids ok. The first thing is uh, distinguishing between crystalline solid and amorphous solid. What is example of amorphous solid? All of you know glass is a amorphous solid whereas, other solids like copper or in this hall you have got um, steel pillars steel or iron they are crystalline solids. Okay. So, the distinction between crystalline solids and non crystalline or amorphous solids determination of the crystal structure as I told you the lattice parameters determination of them not only the lattice parameters the important thing as I told you the nature of the bonding is uh, depending upon how the electrons are distributed. So, the mo more important thing is determination of electron distribution within the atoms and throughout the unit cell more importantly throughout the unit cell how the I to showed you when I taught you about um, the germanium semiconductor how the electrons are preferentially oriented in between the two germanium atoms. So, the electron distribution can be obtained in using x ray diffraction method. The determination of the orientation of single crystals that can be obtained by Loewe method, the texture and poly of polygrind materials this can be determined by x ray diffraction, measurement of strain and uh, the small grain size. Now, we are talking about the nano grains, but uh, nano grain size cannot be determined very accurately by XRD, but up to a certain dimension the generally grain sizes can be obtained by X ray diffraction. Now, what are the advantage of X ray diffraction? X rays are the least expensive, the most convenient and most widely used method to determine the crystal structures. X rays are not absorbed very much by air. So, the sample need not be evacuated the sample need not be kept in a evacuated chamber right. The, the disadvantage is shown as a last factor x rays do not interact very strongly with lighter elements. Let me put this as a question to you if you have got if I ask you the question how will you determine the crystal structure eyes. So, x ray is not a very good method because it has got hydrogen, hydrogen as all of you know it is the lightest, lightest element. So, lightest element means the number of electrons that you have got is only one right only one electron. So, beryllium has got two electrons, lithium has got three electrons. So, when you are dealing with lighter elements x ray diffraction is not a good tool. Now, you should be able to answer me as to why lighter elements cannot be studied very accurately using x-ray diffraction method. Now, if you say that 
x ray diffraction is not a very good tool, then what else? How can you study the structure of ice or lithium hydride? You have got lithium again, right? Hydrogen, both are lighter elements, right? So, lithium hydride or any other systems where you have got um, lighter elements, even when you talk of uh, yttrium, barium, copper oxide, uh, so called high temperature superconductor, people use a different diffraction technique to determine the unit cell parameters accurately rather than using the well known x ray diffraction, because it contains oxygen, which is somewhat again comes under a lighter element. The other diffraction methods all apart from x ray diffraction, you have got a very powerful neutron diffraction method, then electron diffraction. Now, what is neutron diffraction? What do you know about neutron? You know neutron is a neutral particle, right? It does it have charge, right? Like x ray is uh, made up of photons, neutrons are particles, right? Neutrons are particles, they do not have any charge. In spite of the fact that neutron does not have a charge, remember it has got a magnetic moment, it has got a negative magnetic moment. The magnetic moment is given either in terms of Bohr magnetons or nuclear magnetons, right. So, you know E h before pi m c gives the Bohr magneton. So, neutron has got a magnetic moment, right, it has got a magnetic moment because of the fact that neutron has got a magnetic moment. Neutron beam can is incident on a crystal gives not only the crystal structure, but also the more important thing is the most important thing is it gives the magnetic structure because neutron has got a magnetic moment, it has got a up spin or a down spin, it has got a magnetic moment. So, the neutron which has got a magnetic moment can probe the a magnetic solid iron or cobalt or lanthanum copper oxide any system which has got a magnetic moment, some of the atoms will have magnetic moment. So, the, the magnetic structure and as well as the magnetic moment of the unit cell, these things can be obtained by neutron diffraction. So, of the two which one is a powerful technique, neutron can be used to study number one lighter elements, whenever you have got hydrogen or lithium, neutron is a better technique compared to x-ray diffraction. Second point is when you have got a magnetic material, right? X-ray will not give you the magnetic structure. Neutron will give both the crystal structure and the magnetic structure. So the things to be borne in mind are neutrons can give or neutron diffraction can give both the crystal structure as well as the magnetic structure. Neutron can be used to study lighter elements, and neutron beam is essentially required if you got two elements found in a system whose atomic numbers differ by a smaller amount. A smaller amount means the piece coming from the two elements will be of more or less of uh, equal magnitude. To separate them neutron diffraction is a better technique and than the x-ray diffraction. So, to sum up I told you light atoms like hydrogen can be better resolved using x-ray diffraction and not the neutron diffraction uh, I mean the, the neutron diffraction and not by x-ray diffraction that is very important right. So, neutron diffraction has several advantages they interact with um, electrons you know you know the, the magnetic structure can be obtained the mag because neutron has got a magnetic moment neutrons have intrinsic magnetic moment. So, they will interact strongly with atoms and ions in the crystal which also have a magnetic moment. So, magnetic materials can be the magnetic moment of the individual atoms the whether it is ferromagnetic, antiferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic all these details with regard to magnetic materials can be studied in a greater detail using neutron diffraction. So, it is a much more useful technique better technique okay that is compared to the x-ray diffraction. So, x-rays have got a wavelength of uh, about 1 angstroms and um, they interact with the electrons. The, here the neutrons interact with the nuclei they are highly penetrating. You can have electron diffraction again of the same wavelength energy of this much magnitude it interacts with the electrons less penetrating compared to the neutron beam right. 
So, let us pass on to the problem like given the atomic radius let me read the problem the atomic radius of lead atom which crystallizes in the phase centered cubic structure in the lectures to come we will be studying in a greater detail about the crystal structures just because we have uh, come across this relation earlier that is the interplanar separation d is equal to a by a is the lattice constant divided by h square plus k square plus l square to the power half where h k l are called the Miller indices they refer to a particular plane right they refer to a particular plane. So, if the plane is known then if d is known a can be calculated that is what uh, precisely the problem is about the atomic radius a the atomic radius of the lead atom is given as uh, 1.746 angstrom unit the atomic radius the lead has got a FCC structure phase centered cubic structure what have been asked is determine the spacing between the 100 zero zero planes you got a plane called 100 zero zero plane and so the interplanar separation is given by d right okay uh, this is what have been asked and um, now the spacing d will be given in terms of a by h square okay this is a k square plus l square to the power half but a will be given the the lattice constant a is given as uh, 4 r by square root of 2 that is obtained by a relation which we will be seeing in the lectures to come for phase centered cubic structure the lattice constant a is given in terms of the radius of the atom right it is given in terms of the radius of the atom radius is given here 1.746 the radius is given here therefore if you substitute the radius here a will become equal to this much okay and uh, so a will be 4.93 angstrom for 100 plane and the d value will be equal to a is here okay a is here 4.93 but what about h k l h is 1 k is 0 l is 0 here h is 1. So, you got only 1 here. So, this will be only 1 square will come in the denominator or 1 to the power of uh, 1 square to the power. Of, so, your d will be equal to this much. Okay. Let me give a summary of today's lecture. Number 1, the powder method is used to determine the lattice parameters accurately. X-rays do not interact very strongly with lighter elements is a very important point. Lighter atoms such as hydrogen are better resolved using neutron beam rather than the X-ray beam. Neutron diffraction gives not only the crystal structure, but also the magnetic structure. The questions that we have for you are question number 1, what is the main advantage of X-ray diffraction? Number 2, how is the above overcome by neutron diffraction? Question number 3, what are the advantages of neutron diffraction over XRD? There are several advantages. Find the bondings in the following systems. The systems are hydrogen molecule, hydrogen gas, hydrogen chloride molecule within the molecule between two hydrogen chloride molecules HCl gas, HCl in the liquid form water H 2 O, silicon gallium arsenide and the more interesting the combination of two metals copper and uh, gold cesium oride C U A U. With this we come to the end of uh, the lectures the lecture series on the bondings in solids one of the important chapters in the paper on physics of materials meant for the applied electronic students and in the lectures to come as I told you there is an intimate connection between 
structure and bonding we will be studying the other aspect namely the crystal structure of solids. Thank you.